Hi there, I'm Jill Martin. I'm 45 years old and I was single for 44 years. But once I fully found myself, I found my love. On the Today Show, I share the latest trends and inspirational stories. But a tale I haven't totally gotten into, I got engaged twice to the same man. And now I know the golden rule to be happy for all of my tomorrow. Hi guys, I'm Tinks. I've dated in London, New York, LA, and San Francisco. Now I use my tiny microphone to give out advice to millions of people on how to date, have fun, and be true to yourself. Hi, I'm Tracy McMillan. I'm 57 years old. I'm a relationship coach, TV host, author, and mom. And I have worked with thousands of people on their love lives. And I can tell you this, it is not about finding the right person. It's about being the right person. A lot has changed over the past few years, and if you're dating, the path to love can be hard to navigate. It makes the old rules just feel, well, outdated. So today, three different women of different ages with different backgrounds are coming together to rewrite them. These are the new rules for finding love. This is pretty cool because nothing is off limits. We're here to really talk and really redefine the rules. So mm -hmm. I feel like this pandemic has been so messy for everybody mm -hmm. and dating has been something that has been so tough. It, dating was tough enough before, right. let alone after right. this mess. Mm -hmm. So what has the past two and a half, three years been like for you? You know, I think that the pandemic really held up a mirror for all of us and made us mm -hmm. all examine our lives, what we want um, for ourselves, from our partners. And in that way, you know, that's a little bit of a silver lining, right? Because we really think about what we want. However, I think our phone addiction and the whole online portion of dating has gotten completely out of control in the past mm. two years because we're all completely addicted to our phones in a way that we never have been before. So dating and, um, you know, the apps are all gamified. And what about you, Tracy? I feel like the pandemic was an opportunity to really take stock of where I was in my life. All the things that were filling up my life, the career, like friendships, brunch, I realized when all that stopped, that being alone was not a life plan. Like, I needed to pay more attention to my personal relationships. I could relate to what you both said. You know, I, um, I like to concentrate on silver linings, especially after this mess. And um, what I've gotten broad stroke, the breadth of it, is to really go narrow and deep. I started mm. the pandemic breaking up with my fiance and ended it um, planning a wedding. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, we've been video dating, if you will, with some singles and couples. And the one thing we heard over and over is that sometimes baggage can weigh you down, but it doesn't have to. Take a look. I was married twice and I got divorced, so I started over again. So for the last two years, I've been online dating. I did fall for someone and I had a big disappointment. I got an email from a woman asking what was happening with me and her boyfriend, who she had been dating for two years. And then it came out very quickly. He's been dating many, many women, six to eight that I know of, letting them all think that it was exclusive and creating this alternate life for each of those women. So it makes getting back into the dating pool again even a little scarier but I'm trying. I was very comfortable with telling Devon um, what I had been through because it was I was talking basically to a stranger I'd never see again. It's not like I had this whole plan that we would end up in a relationship you know I was hope you know in the back of my mind it would be <laughs> nice but that you know that wasn't really the plan. You made it so easy to, to talk to you. I think little by little I, I showed you a little more of my anxiety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to hide it um, but I quickly realized that you're just somebody that was going to comfort me and that I didn't have to be ashamed of the fact that something was stressing me out or making me uncomfortable. I think I'm uniquely qualified to be your person because I understand. So let's just, we're all going to call ourselves out here because yeah. we agreed to all be honest. Yeah. So you've been divorced yeah. one or two. I've been married and divorced three times. Now, the thing that was important was that I had learned my lessons. Mm -hmm. At the end of my third marriage, I was like, oh, wow, I am doing every single thing wrong in relationships. I had to look at myself, take the whole relationship house down to the studs and do it different. What were you doing wrong? Like, what was the biggest? Oh, wow. I was believing in the romantic fantasy. I was like, uh, I had a lot of things where I, I could not tolerate uncertainty. 
So what that meant is that I got in relationships that were all on from moment one. That's and a big thing. Big like, red tolerating, flag. Tolerating, like not living yeah. in the unknown. Yes, living because, in the gray. Yes, mm -hmm. and I couldn't tolerate that. So I ended up getting in relationships where the only qualification is that you weren't going to leave me from day one. Mm -hmm. And that comes out of my personal history, out of my baggage. Mm -hmm. My baggage is I was a foster child. I was given up. Like I had a lot of intense stuff that I was bringing into my relationships that I needed to process before I was going to be able to form a secure attachment. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got in the relationship I'm in now, he, was he hesitant? Like, hey, yes, she's been divorced yes. three times. He like, there's like, a red flag here. Yes, he was like, that's a concern. Right. And I was like, okay, here's what I can say. I have not lived with or married anyone in 16 years. Mm. I did my work. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to be responsible for my life and everything I create. That's, no, a, I, that's a big, that's a big thing. So it's interesting because you, you know, say that you give advice. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I say, you're, th you're like, yes, I do. Yes, um, I sure do. And, <laughs> and so many young girls listen to you. What would your friends say mm -hmm. are your patterns or your baggage, let's say, going mm -hmm. into relationships? I, I think that they would say I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I have a pretty good attachment style. I mean, I fell in love last year, as all my followers know, and I fell really hard, really fast. You know, he ended up cheating on me, but, Sorry. but, but that's, you know, it's actually interesting in the context of this conversation because I, I say, leave the baggage, keep the lesson, mm -hmm. right? Like you can always learn something, but you mm -hmm. don't have to carry the hurt. Mm -hmm. I had you know, fallen in love so fast. I was giddy. I had what I call boyfriend sickness because I was just like heart eyes emoji. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, I got my heart broken, but here's the thing. I spoke about it publicly because I thought it, there's so many younger people who do follow me out there. And listen, a lot of people get cheated on. It's mm -hmm. a thing that unfortunately happens all the time. It's not about you, mm -hmm. okay? It's something that the yeah. other person did. I don't feel embarrassed that I fell mm -hmm. in love. I don't feel ashamed that I trusted the person that I was in love with. It just, you know, that was on him. Mm -hmm. um, so the lesson actually isn't anything to do with him and the cheating. It, it had, uh, what, what I took from it is actually something beautiful, which is that I, I remember how much I love being in love. How did you find out? <laughs> She she DM'd me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Who's the? It, and he had a girlfriend or no he no had no. It, it was it was just a random. It was a like a hook. It was person. a hook up in the a club. Side piece. It was yeah mm -hmm. a hook up. Why did she DM you? What she? What was her? Because she was she was one of my followers. Oh And wow. so it was you know it was. It was really painful. It was in the mm -hmm. moment I was just in total disbelief, and so I mm -hmm. took this very raw. TikTok of me crying and explaining mm -hmm. what happened and how I felt. And I thought, if, if there's young women out there who respect me or follow me or think I'm cool or whatever, and I can show them that, you know, it happened to me and it's nothing that right. I did, then that's a silver lining, right? right. We can take this pain and turn it into something like a teachable moment or at least, you know, get something out of it. And I got thousands and thousands and thousands of messages sure. young people writing and saying you know i got cheated on i took it really personally and then i watched all your old videos mm. and I, I realized like it's nothing that i did it's about the other oh, person yeah. i always feel like i have to look that water seeks its own level there's a oh, part I of that. me that needs to see certain things and it's like dating is you know your baggage is your teacher right? It's not about feeling shame that you have baggage. Yeah. It's about allowing yourself to see where am I here to grow? Yes. So it's interesting because you led me into my story. Your own, is, yeah. Um, yeah. Hard for me to even discuss. But I think it's helpful. So mm -hmm. I will discuss it and I haven't. But um, so at the beginning of the pandemic, we were just fighting all the time. And my fiance, Eric, is just like a love. And a wonderful human being and shares the same moral values as I do mm -hmm. and are at fundamental values. Um, and we were just fighting all the time and mm. I was not picking my battles and mm. um, I'm not blaming myself. Right. Okay. Right. But my stuff at that time and his mm -hmm. stuff did not match up. Mm -hmm. Right. Or and I wasn't yeah. willing, <laughs> I wasn't willing mm -hmm. to change my, the way I reacted Strategy. to this yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. my strategy, mm -hmm. that's right. a good word to accommodate. Mm -hmm. So he basically said things like, if you don't, you know, this is not going to work, this is not going to work. And I was like, he'll never leave me. Wow. And then one day, 
he was like, I can't fight anymore. Wow. And I was. Wow. I can't imagine. I was really bad. I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. For a really long time. Yeah. And, um, and it caused me wow. to reevaluate mm -hmm. what was important to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I am so proud of who I am as a human being mm -hmm. now. I am on, you know, a path that, like, if you, if you walked away and you said to somebody, I didn't really like that, Jill, I'd be like, oh, that's strange. I thought we had a really nice conversation. Yeah. She right. must be having a bad day. Yeah. Right. Or right. if somebody said, oh, she's, you know, she's ugly. Somebody mm -hmm. said that on Instagram yesterday. I don't yeah. like the way you look. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. You know, yeah. that's yeah. cool. Like, yeah. you do you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know the path that I'm on. Right. Yeah. So Eric has not changed. Mm -hmm. He says he has, but he hasn't. Mm -hmm. I have changed, yeah. and I am so grateful mm -hmm. that I was given the other opportunity yeah. to, I called him mm -hmm. after 16 months. Wow. We hadn't spoken. You hadn't spoken at all. Not in 16 months. months. I wow. said, if you walk out the store, we will never speak again. Wow. And, um, oh, Jill. Jill. <laughs> yeah, and so Jill. I called him mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, you're in my dreams. Wow. Yeah. And um, I think we're making a life mistake. Wow. And this is why. And he's like, well, what would it look like? And then I was like, on. I was like, right, yeah. I was like the 12 hour yeah. phone call. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, um, I feel grateful for the other opportunity. Yeah. And it leads me into mm. um, this way that I live now. And I think you'll both relate to this, yeah. which is this save draft approach. Right. When something um, gets like, you know when you just get to the, you, someone says something or something happens and yes. you're immediately set off yeah. mm -hmm. and you want to yeah. like send an email or call oh. somebody or react. I just save draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. My number's 20 minutes. Some people it takes an hour. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes just I have diffuse. a different, like life is 90% is how you react. 10% oh, yeah. of what happens. You gotta diffuse. That's the coolest thing that you did that, that growth work. And now not only are you with the love of your life, but you are happier too. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the new rules for finding love. Some say to underwhelm with your profile and wow them on the date. Others take a different approach called catfishing. I got catfished one time. In the picture, she, you know, skin is smooth, beautiful eyes, and her voice. Oh my God, I still remember. Her voice was, uh, it was something special. She's sending pictures and I'm sending her pictures of me. At this point, we're basically dating, but we haven't seen each other. My friend pointed out, he's like, man, if you notice, something is a little different. And then one day, she was like, there's something I gotta tell you. She got real quiet. She was going online and she was taking these, this girl who was like a model. And man, my heart was crushed crushed i matched with this guy on bumble he asked me to transition into whatsapp through a voicemail i just wanted to say good morning and so then we dove into this really intense long conversation i spent the entire day talking to him i'd say around 12 hours the next morning when i woke up i had like a two paragraph long text message from him saying that um, he was like falling in love. That's what started raising more red flags. And I, I sent a screenshot to my friends. I realized that he had wiped all the metadata from each of the photos that he was sending me. And there was nothing. One of my friends, she's like the FBI agent of our group, uh, came back and she was like, this is the real guy. Here's his actual profile. So then I confronted him. I made this TikTok about it. What do you think about that? You know, what I think is that I have to be much less concerned about the people out there who are coming to get me than I and who I am being. So, mm -hmm. for example, the one girl talks about spending 12 hours on the phone with someone. Don't spend 12 hours on the phone yeah. with somebody. Have a boundary. Spend 20 minutes on the phone with somebody. Because that guy who's catfishing or that girl who's catfishing is depending on you having permeable boundaries. When you see a red flag, like, who 
wee, wee, like mm-hmm. take it. Gut I mean, feelings are guardian angels. I mean, seriously, mm-hmm. if someone is telling you that they love you and you've never even been in the same room as them, mm-hmm. that's a flaming red flag. Right. It's a classic case of love bombing. I mean, we see this mm-hmm. happen with narcissists all the time. You know, they rope you in in the first couple of dates. They're they're all of a sudden using we early mm-hmm. on, like, well, when we do this, when you meet my, when we meet my mom next weekend, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. So you mm-hmm. really just have to gut check. You have to get the confidence in yourself yeah. and gain that confidence in yourself mm-hmm. to know this is what I want. This is what I like. This mm-hmm. is what I'm looking for. Yes. And I think that leads me to our next topic, which mm-hmm. is kitten fishing. I didn't even know what this was. A lot of people don't know they're doing it, is putting those filters or lying about your age, you know, just these little yeah. white lies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And subconsciously right. you're thinking yeah. this is the only way that I'll be loved, right? right. That's what subconsciously is like happening. When you add mm-hmm. an extra inch, when you take a couple years off your age, you're mm-hmm. basically saying, as I am, I'm not worthy to accept love. And that's the major problem with yeah. it. So mm-hmm. I I took a photo of myself without makeup mm-hmm. and then I added this very popular filter. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. have a photo of it um, that I okay. can show you. So if I were doing this yeah. just sort of, I was just posting something and I wanted to yeah. highlight a t-shirt, that's uh-huh. one thing. Mm-hmm. But to put that on a dating app. I, yeah, I wouldn't. I, that's, Don't you want to look yeah. like, I want you someone to look to, like yourself. Right. You want, when someone's attracted to you on a dating app, you want them to say, Wow, I like that, not, oh, I like the filtered version. And it, you know, I, I can't imagine the anxiety that it causes if you are putting filtered, overly filtered, or face tuned pictures of yourself mm-hmm. on a dating app. Then the anxiety of meeting that person in real life and, and knowing that they're gonna see a disconnect. Another term that um, we hear a lot about and is, is really, I think, um, precipitates a lot of women not and men not putting themselves out there is ghosting. Okay, mm. let's talk about ghosting. Yes. Ghosting could be the best thing that ever happened to you. So to me, you know, rejection is God's protection, right? It's like if somebody ghosts you, all it means is that they did not see themselves in a long-term relationship with you and they do not have the emotional skill to handle the intimacy that is required to break up with you in person. So they can't be vulnerable, whatever it is. And in which case, you know, namaste. Because they couldn't do the relationship. I think I share your sentiment, but I say it a little differently. I always tell my followers, ghosting is small D energy. It Mm. is the opposite of confident. Because Mm. how hard is it to pick up your phone and say, hey, really liked getting to know you these Mm -hmm. past couple weeks. I don't actually feel a romantic vibe. I respect you, Mm -hmm. so I want to be straight up with you. Um, Good luck out there. But that's really hard, actually. The amount of time that we could save one another if we're just up front with an anti-ghost text. Just like... Just send the text. Be kind. You know what I hate even more than ghosting? Mm is what you call breadcrumbing. So breadcrumbing is like a soft ghost, right? It's like they don't completely ghost you. They just reach out from beyond the grave once in a while. And and you know what's so bad? (laughs) They might want you someday. They're literally leaving you on the back burner. They're putting Mm -hmm. you on simmer. They're pushing you to the back just in case they're bored one weekend. Coming up, is hookup culture dead forever? Gosh, I hope so. Welcome back to the new rules. We're rewriting the outdated rules for finding love. And the one thing we've been hearing over and over from couples is that dating has become way more intentional. Before the pandemic, when I was dating, I really thought that I was looking for like the person who wanted to go to social events all the time and be out in the public eye. And I'm definitely more nonchalant. I thought that to be a power couple, both of us had to have that personality. I realized that what I was really looking for was somebody that I could be happy with at home. Somebody that made me feel prioritized and adored. Of course, baby, no. We got engaged after, what, eight months? Just about, and then we got married a few months after that. And now we've got twins that are just our world. In our past relationships, we've definitely struggled skipping over red flags, putting our needs last, and you know, staying in relationships way longer than we wanted to out of the fear that we'll never find love again. It's stressful. Absolutely. And while we were single, we learned that it's impossible to give the love to others that we haven't given to ourselves yet. So once we started loving ourselves, we felt confident in who we are, and we attracted each other. It led us to each other. It was beautiful. It's almost intentional dating can almost be called being more of your authentic self. Like, what right. do you really 100%. want? I want to be in a committed relationship. Mm-hmm. I want to get married. I want to have kids. Mm-hmm. You could get that out of the way pretty early. Right. Whereas before, I think people were a little bit like, 
I don't want to say all those things. Right. right. And what I'm always trying to say to people is, you're not saying, I need that from you. You're saying, this is where I am in my life. This is my life project. I see myself wanting family, togetherness, belonging, or whatever it is that you're looking for. But you're not saying you need to be the one to provide that. You're just stating your own position on the relationship map. Yeah. If you state where you are, the people who don't want that will go away, and that's a good thing. So it's interesting because you say, you know, really be intentional about what you want, mm-hmm. not necessarily from that person, right. but you have a very different strategy. My personal um, ethos is don't date for a partner because I mm. think it makes it, it can make it a zero sum game and it can add a lot of pressure. Like, oh, this, you're o- it's only a good date if it's going to lead to something. Mm-hmm. I think um, that dating needs a rebrand. I think it should be an era, kind of like being a teenager or going to college. And I think mm-hmm. that dating is about discovering what you want mm-hmm. and discovering things about yourself and, and how you do that is by meeting new people. Okay, I like this about this person. I didn't like this about this person. You're all adding all this information all while working on your self-worth my big thing is self-worth and one of the couples touched on it they said you know we had to love ourselves we had to fill up Mm -hmm. our cup first and then that right person dropped in so I think that two things can be true at the same time like I think that you can want those things and 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 know that they're going to happen but I also don't think you need to put that internal pressure on yourself for every single date that you can have you go on with your bad self like yeah yeah I agree with that but I will say as a woman of 57 I have watched where I always say the fastest years of a woman's life are between 32 and 37 Mm. and it's the difference between DGAF and OMFG mm-hmm. because all of a sudden mm-hmm. 32 woo, woo, I don't give a f- mm-hmm. you know DGAF and then 37 all of a sudden it's like oh, I do I mean OMFG it's like all of a sudden that you get to this place yeah. where you want to do this thing and suddenly there's not the time there right what I feel like women did not say in my generation was if you want to have children, it needs to be a priority. My fear with that thinking is that, you know, with with all that pressure to find a partner to to be your, you know, your other half is that it is that a lot of especially young women, they they I settle. Know. And my whole thing is like you have to you know, agree with you that, that um, you know, we're, we're pack animals. We like to have partnership and companionship, but it's not going to make you happy. It's not going to fill, fill you up. Like, you have to fill up your own cup, and then the right person will drop in. I have both sides mm-hmm. of this. I think that you need to treat dating. And when I was dating on these dating apps, mm-hmm. I think you need to treat it as a job. I would get out at 6 o'clock at night, and I would plan a 6 o'clock date and an 8 o'clock date, drink wow. dates three times a week <gasps> on the dating apps. Yeah. And I went, and I was like... And I met Eric three weeks later, and I was his second date of the night. Oh my um, God. So I do believe in treating it as a job. You have to know what you want, but don't think of every date that you don't want to fall in love with him as a failure. Yeah. Because it's I all learning experience. Up next, the golden rule for dating that will change everything. You won't want to miss it. Next. Welcome back to the new rules for finding love. I hope you have champagne because we're already through a few glasses. I think <laughs> we've needed it. So. We've been teasing it the whole show, and I want to say my golden rule. Now, this is not brain surgery, but I do believe this, that you cannot go wrong with the right person. You cannot mess it up. Believe me, I've tried a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I've had twists and turns. Mm -hmm. If the right person is your person, you cannot mess it up, and that is the golden rule. And also, this is a big headline. Like, If you don't take anything else from the show, take this. Do you know what a guy or a girl wants to do when they want to date you? They date you. They do. Yeah. You know what a guy or a girl Mm -hmm. wants to do when they want to marry you? They marry you. Mm -hmm. They do. Look at the actions. You know what a guy or girl wants to do when they want to text you? They freaking text you. Yeah, right. The phone's not lost yeah, or in water yeah, right. or they're, they're not, not busy. busy. Stop worrying about if you put two exclamation points or one at the end of the text. Confusion. Okay. There's no okay. confusion. If there is confusion, it's not your person. Exactly. The super right person is going to encourage me and call forth what is highest mm-hmm. in me. If a relationship is bringing that forward, that is what I'm looking for. Like when you talk about your story with Eric, I'm like, what he encouraged in you was something higher. Yeah. You caught a glimpse of a higher Jill, and then you went, I wanna be her. Right. And that's what I got like you. Her. 
Yeah. Well, I like her, and I like you, and yes. I like you, and thank you so much. Thanks for I think this us. is really important, it is. and I'm it so is. glad yes. we took the time. I so agree. this is Tracy, Yay. this is Dings, I'm Jill. Thank you to this beautiful location, mm-hmm. Anasa Taverna downtown. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. To the new rules. To the new rules. We've given you the new rules for finding love, and now I want you to feel and look great for your next date, so we've curated some of our favorite things. Head to today.com for some amazing products. And Today works with affiliate partners and may earn a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.